In this video, we will talk to Christian Robertson, who is the Deputy Resilience Officer of Resilience Santiago. Santiago, the capital of Chile, is well known for being an extremely resilient city against earthquakes. Nevertheless, as Christian will explain, the Resilience Santiago project understands resilience in a more comprehensive way that goes beyond the absorption of natural disasters. Aligned to what was presented in the previous lectures, resilience is also viewed here throughout social and economic lenses. The interview is a good opportunity to see how this contemporary broad resilience understanding is being implemented in a real case. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Can you explain what is the Resilience Santiago project and what is your role in it? On 2015, Santiago was selected to be part of 100 Resilient City program, pioneered by the Rockefeller Foundation. This program helped cities around the world to become more resilient to the physical, social and economical challenges that are a growing part of this century. The program proposed a holistic understanding of resilience, defined as the capacity of individuals, communities, institutions, business and systems within a city to survive, adapt and grow, no matter what kind of chronic stresses and acute shock they experience. Despite the term resilient, is commonly related to natural disasters or acute shocks such as earthquake floods, the program also incorporates the understanding of resilience related to chronic stresses that city faces, such as inequality, violence, or inefficient transport system. My name is Christian Robertson, and I am Santiago's Deputy City Resilient Officer. Our office is located inside the regional government, and our team works together with several ministries, NGOs, universities, and several public and private stakeholders in order to develop a resilient strategy to be implemented in the metropolitan region. What do you think are the major challenges to improve the resilience capacity of Santiago? Are they more social, economic or environmental challenges? Santiago is an, an interesting case of study because it is affected by multiple hazards, both social and environmental. Starting by the former, Santiago is currently living the consequences of political decisions made 30 years ago and perpetuated during democracy, in the manner in which cities are being built. During Pinochet's dictatorship, legal modifications were proposed in order to engage the interest of property developers to invest in social housing. Liberties generated in zoning, flexibility in land uses, and an increase in density under non-restrictive conditions. As might be expected, the private sector took maximum benefits of this situation by building a massive housing lot in peripheral areas. Despite the fact that the model has been internationally highlighted due to its impressive quantitative results, several critiques have been raised in relation to the quality of urban conditions. Santiago has about 7 million inhabitants and it concentrates in 18% of its territory the wealthiest population in conditions that could be easily compared with first world cities. Meanwhile, the majority of its population lives in a different condition. We could say that Santiago is definitely a two-faced city. Just to give you an example, the poorest area in Santiago have an average of 1.8 meters square per inhabitant of green areas versus the richest boroughs that have an average of 56 meters square per inhabitant. It is necessary to rebuild a just city where the opportunities of urban life, the famous right of, to the city, could be reached by all. To reach that, it is necessary to prioritize the poorest and rethink a city that is built at a human scale, in which people and its experience of living the, the city are first. We have built city focus on quantitative results, and it was a completely fail. We have to refocus to qualitative results, positioning people first. On the other hand, Santiago is affected as well by enro several environmental hazards. Chile is known by earthquakes, the whole territory is located on an active tectonic plate called Ring of Fire. In addition, a few years ago, an, act an active fault called San Ramon Fault, like San Andreas Fault in San Francisco, were discovered. This fault crossed all the cities near the Piedmont. And finally, climate change is affecting our city too. 
the rising temperature has elevated the isotherm of the mountain, has produced shorter but more intense rains, risk of landslides, desertification from the north, among other issues. What is the city of Santiago already doing to overcome these challenges? We are currently developing Santiago's resilience strategy, in which we aim to develop an action plan that will guide the action of the regional government in order to be prepared for future impacts and to revert the unjust city build. The goal is not just to write on a strategy that will be safe in a store, we want to develop a tool that could effectively help the development of the city. Santiago is a well-diagnosed city, so we decide to check on all information available produced by different actors, for example, previous strategies launched, sectoral action plans, documents, programs running, among several others. We organized several participatory instances to raise the issue of the city and prioritize the different areas. We interview key actors, check all the public programs, and at the end, we discovered that all the actors were talking about the same subjects. It was just necessary to organize them through an umbrella term and an umbrella strategy that definitely start the implementation phase. The strategy tackles six pillars translated into several objectives and each objective in specific actions, programs and plans in short, medium and long term. The pillars are mobility for a connected Santiago, human security for a safety Santiago, environment for a green and sustainable Santiago, risk management for a prepared Santiago, economic development for a global Santiago, and social equality for an inclusive Santiago. Furthermore, we founded a public-private steering committee incorporating key stakeholders involved in decision-making processes to discuss several issues related to Santiago. The committee has monthly sessions pioneered by regional government and the resilient team. What do you think will happen with the policies and actions created by the Resilient Santiago project? We're currently experiencing a geopolitical shift. Santiago is composed by 52 communes, run by local mayors, democratically elected, operating like isolated islands. Surprisingly, the governance system in Chile did not define any authority with power and attributions, like a city or regional mayor, that could coordinate them, ensuring a regional vision like a city as a whole. This reality reflects, for example, in Santiago's public bicycle system. About 14 communes have an integrated bicycle system that is not compatible with bicycle systems of one commune that is just in the middle of the city. Clearly, there are some urban issues that have to be managed at a city scale because, because it involves several communes and the whole city. After years of discussions in the Congress, last month the democratic election of a regional authority that will be called governor was approved which will be above communes and will have the attribution to manage the city as a whole. The development of the current resilient strategy is being created in order to be positioned as the main document that will guide the city in short, medium and long term, planning for even after the year 2041. At the same time, we are creating the regional city unit that will promote the development of the city as a whole, seeking to build at the end a human and resilient Santiago for all its inhabitants.